Welcome everybody to the seventh video in my EV3 programming series. In this video, we'll be talking about something different, basically um, something that isn't actually in the blocks tab, but yet is a block. It's what we call my blocks, which is in the last section of the down panel. And if we can see, there's nothing here. So how do we cover a block that doesn't exist? Well, I'll show you. What a my block is, is it's a customized block that can contain a multiple of any of these blocks inside it. Basically, you can make an entire program of my block, you can make a calibrate of my block, you can make a loop of my block, you can make anything a my block. So how do we make it then if there's nothing in the tab? So we're going to start off with the basics. Let's use a loop tank block and drag it in. And so we're going to try to make a my block out of this move tank block. The way we do so is you click on the block, but not the start button, and you go to tools. And here you'll see third down from the top is what's called the my block builder. And here's where you can make your my block. Click on it. And you can see this light blue or teal block shows up, which is the same color as the one in the my block tab, obviously because they're the same block. Uh, right here you can see this um, one tab and you can see you have the name and you have the description. So just fill in the name, for example, like move tank. So now let's press finish and you get this block. And you can do absolutely nothing with it ex except for move it around. But here's where the basics come in. Um, let's snap it back real quick. If you want to click into the my block, basically see what's inside this my block, you double click. And you can see inside that this my block, it opens up a new uh, program called Move Tank. You can see we have our original Move Tank block. You can close this up if you want. If we want to edit the my block, you can click on the small gear button that says Edit in the top left corner of the block, and you see we get the same screen as we made as we if we uh, made a new one. And now, if you see, if we go back to the my block tab, we now have our Move Tank block in our tab. So even if we delete this and we don't need it anymore, we can just drag out however many of these move tank blocks we want uh, because it's our own customized block and it's saved within the project itself. So if we, would, if we want a move tank block, for example, that instead of moving, well, 50 speed on both motors and one rotation in total, what if we wanted to make uh, one where you can actually fill in the values or fill in the speed? Well. Go to the edit button, and here's what we call parameters. When it says click the button to add or edit parameters, you want to click on that, uh, let's just say one time for now. And what you now have is um, one of the number input or the number output blocks. And what this does is means you can plug in a number into the my block. And this will get clearer as we move on. So go to parameter setup, and let's just do, it's an input. We can name it, for example, um, speed. Or let's just put it as rotations for now. And then we put it to numbers, default value zero. So which means that if we don't put anything in, it's gonna show a value of zero. You can make it a slider, a vertical slider, or a text input. I'm gonna make it a slider for now. Um, and minimum 100, maximum 100, which means we can go uh, 100, negative 100 rotations or we can go up to 100 rotations. Um, you can go to parameter icons and you can choose whichever uh, one you want. I'm gonna choose the rotation. Um, one for now, or I'm just going to do that for now because it's rotations and, um, well, rotations and not degrees. So we'll finish up the small block and let's see how it changes. Uh, click back into lesson one and we can see that, well, we have our parameter now and you can slide it around to see like how many rotations you want. Um, actually what I want you to do is set it back to zero and run your program and see what happens. If you notice, it actually doesn't, it runs like really weirdly and not actually zero rotations. So here's the reason why. Click into your move, move tank tab, or you can double click it. Uh, this is where the parameter is coming into. And if you realize something, the parameter actually isn't doing anything because it isn't plugged into any of the values. And because we wanted this to be a rotation, we can now plug it into the rotation block. What this does is now it will actually take the values that you plugged into your parameter into the rotation button. So let's go back to lesson one and let's plug in, for example, two rotations. Run your robot and you'll see that it will run for two rotations. 
now that we know what parameters are, let's try to change um, our current my block into a my block that not only um, controls the rotations, but can also control the two speeds. I want you to try this on your own, and I'll put the answer up um, in a, a, like a few seconds. Uh, pause the video if you want to try this for yourself, or just keep watching if you want to do it by yourself. So to do this properly, go to the edit portion, and then you want to add two more parameters. And you can set up the first one as, let's just call it uh, speed uh, left. And this will be the left motor speed. Of course, put it at input. You can put default value at zero, keep everything the same, make it a slider, keep that. And for icons, you can do uh, speed for the left one. So I'm just going to put uh, like the indicator pointing at the left to indicate that it's left. Now click on the next one and do the exact same thing as we did before, except to rename it something like speed right, so we know that it's the right motor. Keep the same thing. And try to, when you're making parameters, try to make them different enough so you know which one's which, right? That's why I'm putting the indicator towards the right rather than the left, just to show which motor I'm putting. So you can finish this up really quickly, and then you want to plug in speed left into the left motor. So in my case, I have B and C, and B is my left motor, so I'm plugging it into the power of the left motor, and I'm plugging in um, the speed of the right motor into the power of the right motor. Basically, um, now I can control from this block the speed of the left motor and the speed of the right motor. Now if you run it, you'll see that it essentially does the exact same thing as the move tank block. And that's because it is, right? This rotation matches up with the rotation on the tank block. The speed of the left also matches up with the speed of the left motor and the same thing for the right motor. The only thing we don't have is break at end true, which should theoretically be on for every single program used anyway. So if you run this, it, it should be identical. Let's just run it like 50, 50, and then plug in rotation as one. And you can see that it does the exact same thing. Just run it by yourself. And it runs for one rotation at 50 speed, which is the exact same thing as if we run it like this. Uh, you can try this by yourself. I'm not actually going to show it on camera. Now that we have the basics of um, the my block down, let's see how we can use it in another way. Let's just say we write an old one of our oldest programs, which is move forward, detect the black line, and then stop. Um, we don't have to use the very actually because we have the variable, we can actually use the variable. So write that first, uh, which will look like this, and we'll wait for color sensor, compare RLI. Go to your variable block, because remember, we saved the variable from before, or let's just assume we saved it from before. Um, so we have to set it up first. Uh, let's just keep low at 15 for now. We're going to add a calibrate later, but let's just assume that every single time the reading of the black line is below 15. And now we read the value and plug it in like that. Then, of course, add a off button. So, now, how do we make this a my block? Well, because, so let's break down basically what this program does. This is essentially what we call a variable setup. And this always, always comes before what we call the action part of the program, which is where the actual commands um, show up. And this is basically what we run and what the robot does. And the variable setup is done basically before it, the robot starts moving, before the robot does anything at all. It makes those variables in a fraction of a second. So what we want to make a my block out of always is either the action commands or the variable setup. You never want to make a my block with both at the same time. The reasoning behind it is you'll get really confused because you won't know which one's which within that my block. Like if we make a my block out of all of these, you won't know which one's the variable setup and which one are the action commands. So of course we make a my block out of the last four blocks. So go to tools, my block builder, and don't actually set any parameters right now because we don't really have to. I'll explain why uh, in a second. But you can just name this uh, move to line stop or something something that can is easy to um right like remember and then you can make this like a color sensor or you can make it like any basically of these icons that you want i'm going to make it the color sensor 
for now because it utilizes the color sensor. And now you can see that obviously it saves within here. And whenever in our program we need a move to line stop, instead of copy pasting this whole program over and over and over, we condense this, these four blocks into one very simple, very concise block. This makes reading your program a lot easier and also it makes it a lot faster to program as well because instead of having to rewrite the program or going all the way back and copying it, you have your own personalized block. Now, if we want to customize our parameters a little bit more and use what we learned, well, from the beginning of this video, we can see that, like, where can we add, basically, parameters for this um, move to line stop. Well, we can change the speed of the, of the motors, uh, of the drive. For example, if we want to slow things down or we want to speed things up, we can change that without actually having to go into the my block and change it. What you do is you go to the edit button and then you can add two parameters. And we use the same parameters basically, or the same setup as we did before, which is uh, speed, left, slider, and then choose an icon. I'm gonna use the exact same slide or exact same icon as we did before in order to like minimize confusion. Um, and we're going to do speed right. Do the same thing, obviously. And then you're basically done with your parameters. Now you can obviously where you plug speed left into is the same place as we did before. And now instead of having to go into the my block and changing it every single time, you can now change the speed outside of the my block and have it automatically filled in into your my block. Also, one more thing is you don't actually want to go into your my block every single time and change your values. Why? Because every single time you change the values, it also changes the values for your like all your other my blocks in that same program. So let's just say I didn't have these parameters and I changed this to 41 and negative 92. This next block would also have a speed left of 41 and negative 92. And if you changed it in the second one, it's also going to change the first one. This is why you have parameters because it now it changes the individual block itself rather than the my block as a whole. The last important thing you should do with a my block is to make a variable setup my block. This goes into every single program that may or may not use that variable in the first place. So which variables do we actually have in our program? I'm just going to um, add a bunch of variable blocks just to show you um, why it's a lot easier to do um, a variable setup. So we have low, we have high, and we have a bunch of random variables. However, remember last time we set up a bunch of arrays. So go to numeric array and we have array one. Well, in this program, it's a little bit simpler. We only have three, um, we only have three values and I'm actually gonna change the high to, or I'm gonna change the high to, let's just say a 75 in this program. Uh, and of course we set up our blank array with four numbers if you remember from last time. Our variable setup block, basically every single new program within our project EV3 tutorial is going to have to um, require you to copy over these variables. So what you can do is you can do make a my block out of these and you don't have to set any parameters or anything. You just call it variables and then you can add like a suitcase icon and bam, your program of three blocks or more, depending on the length of your variables or how many variables you have is cut down into one block. And let's just say we want to make a new program and we're writing a new, um, like a new code for whatever reason. You, go, you can just, instead of actually having to set up those variables again and again, you can drag out from the my block variables and your setup is absolutely done. You don't have to do anything to it. It's really quick, it's really clean and it really helps organize your variables from your action blocks from later, such as like these things. I hope you enjoyed this lesson on my blocks. Next time, tune in as we dive into the advanced tab and we see the uses of particularly the file access block where we can save numbers and text into Word documents and uh, things that can be dug out of your actual computer and put into your programs no matter if we have the program open or if we close it, we can have it saved within your computer. Well, until next time, bye bye.